Hey everyone, this is the Pharaoh of Beer Money Finance, Pharaoh Silver here, back with another video, and it is time for the July 2024 Beer Money Portfolio Month in Review. Now, um, it's going to be a little short this time, I mean short as in the time frame. This is going to be up only until July 28th, as due to a weird scheduling where I gotta put out a much high priority video. I'm actually recording this before that video, even though... This is going to be published on August 7th, a week after that video. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, the man with 49,000 parcels as of this recording. Now, before we start, I should also mention a milestone achieved in the portfolio with $1,000 earned alone right here, $1,045.42. And that's just from earning, let alone what we're going to show at the investment section. So we have contributed $1,045.42 worth of beer money in seven months. And before people ask, is that it? I mean, you've heard a ton of others that have made three, four, five times as much in a month. Well, the issue for me is I have a YouTube channel I work on for one, and I have made more than this, but I don't count referrals. I don't count special privileges a casual player would not have. I'm not really involved in some of the higher end survey sites just yet, like Prolific or Cloud Connect Research. Um, and, you know, I don't count certain apps that a casual player would not play, like the Web3 games like Upland or Rollercoin. And in either case, I haven't earned anything in months there anyway. Also, the way I'm going about showing what I'm doing has changed. So instead of showing the green, yellow, amber, or red tier that I used to have in my Beer Money reviews, I'm going to be breaking down the tiers altogether when I bring back Beer Money Reviews next month, and I'm going to instead divide this into the status of, am I using it? That's active. Am I not using it? Inactive. Am I done with it, or it's some kind of a scam, or I don't recommend it? I'm retiring it. And from here on out, what you're going to see is I'm going to hide some of these here. Let's say I'm going to hide this as an example for Just Play, and I'm only going to show the apps in which I am currently active on and anything new I'm on. Maybe I might keep the inactives. I'm not quite sure uh, on hide here, but I'm definitely going to hide the retired ones. So receipt jar can go away. So for the month of July, the portfolio has earned $183.21 from 13 different sources. And now we're going to go over all the 10 plus dollar earners for the month. The top earner this month was free cash, $32.65, almost entirely due to Upside. Upside had an insane $24 offer that I tried out where if you downloaded the app and uploaded a gas receipt, you would earn a $24 bonus on free cash. That's it. I used Upside in the past, but it was so, so, so long ago that I don't even remember the email I used it on. We're talking like 2015 long ago when Upside was called Get Upside. So I gave it a chance on a new email, put in the gas receipt, and managed to pick up $24. That is a crazy amount. Um, another thing I also noticed with Upside, since I'm adding it to my beer money portfolio, back when it was Get Upside, their cash out threshold was 25 bucks, and I said that was much too high. Well, apparently you can cash out at any time now. Uh, you It does charge you $1, however, if you cash out to PayPal, unless you make more than $10, then it's free. So $10 being the soft threshold, I kind of like that. So good on upside for changing that, honestly. But anyway, yeah, I do have about $50 currently stocked there as well in free cash, pending from another game called Pokerist, which in a couple weeks I'm going to be talking about. It's going to get its own separate video. I have also added referral links to both Upside and free cash in the description below as well. But in Upside's case, I do recommend taking the $24 free cash offer instead if you have it. Um, so take the free cash referral instead of the Upside referral. And then use that to get the upside because I think free cash gets that referral. In second place was Bridge Money by only 47 cents at $32.18. Now it would have won out, but I was going back and forth on whether or not I wanted to keep it. So I didn't do videos for like a week and a half. Then I signed up for Chime. And with Chime, I managed to get a virtual debit card that allowed me to deposit to them. Uh, the banks I typically use is a local brick and mortar here in North Carolina, as well as Ally. And... Neither one of them deposit via debit card or give me the option to. I still don't like that Bridge Money got rid of AACH transfers, however. That is a big problem to me. 
but I guess with the debit card transfer working, it's not going to break me too much. Uh, the gift cards are also a major issue as there isn't any gift cards that I'm really interested in. They only have five options. There's no Walmart, there's no PayPal, no Sam's Club, uh, not even a Google Play so we can pay for Earn Plus. But I guess if I get my money, that's all that matters for this portfolio. So I'm going to stick around with Bridge Money. And I did, um, my real account anyway, renew my Earn Plus membership today. Third place is Benjamin with $25.04. Basically, Free Cash has had a lot of very obtainable, reachable achievements to hit with a lot of money that it's kind of pushed Benjamin by the wayside for me, at least for now. But it's still really good for the really high daily login bonuses, so I'm fully expecting that it won't take me too long to cash out again uh, for the month of August. Fourth place is Atlas Earth with 20 bucks. It's going to be a while before Atlas Earth will hit anything beyond 20 bucks, but I mean $20 is still $20. The simulated account currently sits at around 2700 Atlas bucks, and hopefully it will reach enough that I can buy 20 badges and advance to tier 3 in the month of August and get a little bit more of an earnings. In fifth place is Paid Viewpoint with another $15.75. A lot of polls this month, and even though I kind of like that, I know next month it's already started looking a lot sparser, so likely won't stay up here for very long unless something happens. I mean, the next month's going to be technically a 34-day period since the last three days in July. I'm letting bleed over to August, so anything can happen. But with far less surveys happening and only at $2 right now, uh, so I got another 13 bucks before I can even cash out, it's going to be a little tough. So tied in 6th place with $15 a piece is Cash Walk and Receipt Hog, surprisingly enough. Uh, we'll start with Receipt Hog, though. Um, yeah, so with this, I decided I would hold off on the 1,000 points to $5 conversion and cash out at 2,900 points equals $15, and I am not doing that again. The 100-point discount that you get for waiting until you hit $15 just doesn't work out. I will be sticking to the $5 option from here on out. It alone is enough of a chore with so few options to earn. Uh, you know, it's just it's just kind of not worth it to do it past $5. However, uh, so far I've earned 20 bucks this month, which is more than any of the other receipt apps, so kudos to them for that, honestly. Well, outside of Google Rewards, but I don't count Google Rewards in this since I'm not earning any money off of that. Tied with them this month is Cashwalk with $15. Featured in part by Cashwalk mysteriously giving me about 15,000 points. Now, this didn't count because I haven't cashed out yet. Uh, I've waited over three weeks now to see if they were going to return the points, and nothing has happened. So, I'm assuming I got the points off some big reward, and I just don't know what it is. As far as will it count toward the portfolio next month, yes it will. Meaning for next month, Cashwalk has potential to be the top earner long as the Android app doesn't bump its costs up to 5,000 coins for a $5 gift card like the iPhone. But I am going to plan to start cashing out of this probably sometime in the middle of next month when I get back on break. In 8th place is Amazon MTurk with $12.32. Yeah, 8th place. Can you believe it? That many for that many sources had more than 10 bucks this time around. I uh, managed to get off to a good start, but I sputtered late in the month. Now, I'm starting to think that... The issue isn't really me, but there really isn't that many good tasks on MTurk as there used to be. Uh, or at least I haven't been paying too much attention anyway. I'm looking into signing up with Prolific instead because I've heard lots of good things about them. And yeah, so I've got taken off the waiting list pretty quickly. Um, the only issue I'm having right now is a phone number validation, which I'm talking with support and in the process of doing. Maybe I might start Prolific after break. We'll see. And the final, uh, ninth place, the final $10 plus dollar earn for the month was a $10 cash out of CoinOut. So CoinOut has the same issue that Receipt Hog has where there just aren't many options available to cash out on. And I assume it'll be December before I see anything significant as far as bonuses are concerned. Um, surprisingly, despite my praises for CoinOut, it has fallen behind in the earnings track to Receipt Hog. Uh, this being now $15 so far over 7 months compared to $20 for Receipt Hog, so that's kind of intriguing. Now for the remaining amounts, we got $3.88 off of Coinbase Learn, this time learning about Helium Mobile, $4, then of course the conversion fees. $1.04 from Givy, $0.24 cents from the savings account interest rates, and $0.11 cents from Bling Financial. Yeah, $0.11. Cents. 
Moving on to investments now, and I've decided to get a little bit more aggressive with my investments, at least for the Fidelity side. I'm in the process of transitioning from a 60% US stock, 20% international stock, and 20% bond stock strategy to a 60% US stock, 30% international, 10% bond strategy. The reason for this is because I already have bonds and government I-bonds to begin with, so there's no point in having to stack up more than 10% in my opinion. The stock funds have net expense ratios of 0% as well, but the bond fund has a net expense ratio of 0.04%. That's something to ponder over as well. Um, at the moment, it looks more like 60 25 15, but by next month, the transition should be complete. Also, I added some Ethereum that I earned by converting Helium Mobile's token that I mentioned earlier, and then there was a little bit of Ethereum, 11 cents, coming from Bling's Games. However, I seem to have bought at the wrong time because right now it's the only loser amongst the changes that I currently have. But overall, my net worth stands at $1,065.24. Not bad. Uh, the allocation is currently 60% in stocks, 20% in bonds, 19% in cash, most of it because of the Quicksilver deposit, the $200 there, and 1% in crypto. All right, y'all, how about a little bit of a treat here? I'm going to go ahead and buy a parcel. Uh, I got a couple hooks here. I'm going to fill up one of the hooks here. And then after the mini game, I might get a few more. Uh, let me just buy land here. Close this. Click this. Buy. And let's see what I get. What rarity is it? It looks like it's going to be a common. It is a rare. Okay, so it's a rare. And just a little bit of a treat for y'all. I thought, you, you know, it's been a good while since I... Uh, Showing off parcels and stuff, and don't mind the Club Vegas notifications. And finally, my own Atlas Earth progress, in case those of you are still wondering. Now, I'm just going to leave a note here. I'm no longer going to show a detailed Atlas Buck by Atlas Buck breakdown, but I will show how many parcels I'm at and what I've done. So we are a few hours away from the bowling minigame as of the time of this recording, and at this point, and after that rare that you saw just recently, I had recorded that kind of before everything else. I'm sitting at 709 commons, 432 rares, 205 epics, and 66 legendary parcels for a total of 1,412 parcels. In the leaderboard right now, I'm currently 8th in the state of North Carolina and 294th in the United States. Hopefully they'll get that world leaderboard up starting next month so I can show the world results as well. Now with 22 hours of boosting, I currently make $48.21 a month, but I try to do 23 hours of boosting because that puts me at $50.17 a month, and I can do that because my typical sleep patterns have me where I sleep about 7 hours a night, maybe 6.5 to 7. And so the reason why that's so significant, the $50, is because with that much, I can now pay for Explorers Club in full, and still make a tiny little each month. Though the simulated account will still have me use $20 a month, I earn something like a dime a month right now from the game after putting in the Explorers Club subscription. Uh, I still am going to show that $20, but yeah, that gives you an idea just how much I make currently. So I actually can use the Explorers Club in full now starting this month. So my goals for next month are a little bit less focused. Um, part of this is because I'm going to be going on break starting August 1st. I'm currently in the middle of that break. It's a present to myself for my 38th birthday, and my presents during beer money stuff will be pretty minimal during this time. Uh, I do have this video out and one more on the 10th plan before I return August 12th. My goal is basically going to be one thing, earn $150. Um, I'm probably already a third of the way there soon as the money I earned from Pokerist gets out of pending. And that's the video, everyone. So, if you haven't seen the Stealth G6 of 5 video, take a look at that on the left here. Like this video if you like it. Comment on how you've done for the month of July. And don't forget to subscribe to Beer Money Engine. I will see you all next time. This is Pharaoh Silver signing out. Bye, everyone.